from Las Vegas, Nevada. It's the Q covering AWS reInvent 2016. Brought to you by AWS and its ecosystem partners. Now here's your host, John Furrier. Hey, welcome back, everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for AWS reInvent 2016. This is Zilkin Angles, the Cube, our flagship program where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier. Our next guest is from um, CA Technologies, again, Umair Khan, Principal Product Marketing Manager of CA, and Amir's customer, Brad Yun Lee, VP of Strategy at B-Spin Global out of Korea. Great to see you. Guys, welcome nice to theCUBE. Nice Thank to meet you. you. All right, so tell us about the situation. You got Alexa there, a little prop. Uh, we'll get to that later. Um, you guys, they're a customer of you guys. What's the relationship? You guys are suppliers to them, what are you guys doing? So, so we, we talked about our uh, unified infrastructure monitoring capabilities, cloud monitoring capabilities, uh, and Best and Global is one of our uh, premier partners and customers. They use it for their uh, cloud management platform, and uh, Brad, maybe you can mention what Bespin does and how you use our unified infrastructure monitoring and application monitoring capabilities. Sure. So we are actually a cloud-focused managed service partner uh, from Asia. Uh, I can say like we're one of the leading partner for the AWS, um, based out of the Korea and China, and we have a quite big number of the uh, Amazon certified engineers to help customers from uh, consulting to migration and managed services. And we have a, a SaaS base of the tool set called Bespin Service Platform, which is based on the UIMs, uh, the uh, certain components. And we also have a lot of other things we develop in-house as well. So we use this tool set to help customers to adopt the cloud better. Yep. What are some of the drivers that's holding back adoption that you guys are focused on? Because everyone wants to go there faster, go faster, go faster, but there's a lot of constraints. What are the key, um, drivers to go to the cloud, and what's holding people back from going faster? I think in Asia, it's slightly different from the, uh, the uh, different market in the US. So a lot of companies, I'm like for Korea instance, it's like it's a way, we are one of the early adopters for the public cloud services, for Amazon Web Services uh, particularly, because uh, we have a lot of the uh, enterprises who is driving on the mobile uh, services, like, like Samsung or LG, and they are the like, early adopter for uh, Amazon Web Services, and also like uh, gaming, gaming segments. And these are early pioneers, they're actually driving the innovation to let the other enterprises to come along with this cloud wave, like tsunami type of waves, yeah. and uh, adopting the cloud technology in, in, in this, this era. What are you guys using CA for? What products, what's the key product you're, you're using, what service? Sure, so I think right now at this stage we uh, integrate the UIM into our BSP uh, managed service platform and also we will uh, work with the CA for the APM side as well, yeah. So talk about the international piece of it, obviously global cloud is now there. Um, are there geographical issues you guys run into at CA with uh, their use cases around people who want to be multinational? Are there specific things that people worry about? So, so I think the, what, what people worry about is uh, different locations of different centers where cloud are hosted, private or public as well. Uh, they, they want a multi-tenant infrastructure, multi-tenant solution capabilities that allows them to monitor cloud uh, from multi-locations. Uh, so, so that's one of the challenges from global side, but pretty much across the globe we see everywhere uh, people are adopting the cloud a lot rapid pace, and I would say that developing countries are adopting the cloud even more because they're, they're adopting the newer applications. They don't have the traditional legacy infrastructure that they have to go through, right? Uh, so, so I would say the development world is, is pretty aggressively adopted the cloud as well. Brad, what are the things that you're most excited about the cloud? What's exciting you about the, uh, the cloud opportunity? I think to me personally, I think it's transforming the, uh, best, uh, the IT landscape these days. So we see a lot of the old players is like, you know, becoming a new player, or new player become a bigger players. And uh, Amazon is a, totally is a big innovator in, in this segment. And uh, it gave us a lot of opportunity to expose into a new uh, type of business uh, in the IT, um, IT world. And uh, I mean, just look at here, I mean, a lot of <laughs> new friends. <laughs> it's, it's exciting. Amazing. Yeah. It's like Burning Man, as they say in California. It's really one of those cult followings, but it's really true. People are really creating value, which creates wealth creation for people. Yep. And Absolutely. creates jobs. There's so much action going on. Yep. Yeah. But you know, I worry though about 
for customers, you know, drinking the Kool-Aid or whatever you want to use, they, they get too high up on doing things faster and get enamored with cloud and go too far. Have you seen that? People have to slow down their enthusiasm to get realistic? I mean, there are just, I mean, enterprises are hard. I mean, no, a new app from scratch, no problem. Born in the cloud, never look back. Yeah. But existing stuff, what's your thoughts? It's a, it's a three, right? I mean, like, look at the Asia right now. Uh, as, as I mentioned, like, Korea is one of the early adopter for the public cloud services, right? And China is picking up as well because China has a different different players in the in the domestic market, and Amazon has a presence as well. So um, it's not a stage that the people are talking about the cloud. It's more like uh, they they wanna they wanna move their uh, workloads, more workloads, or diversify workloads into the cloud. It's a it's an exciting era actually. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're like they don't want to have the conversation. That's like DevOps ethos, Asia Pacific, but specifically, what I hear is. We don't talk about that stuff. We just want it to work. Yeah. I'm yep. building apps. Yep. That's the mindset. Uh, so uh, if you're causing a problem, get out of the way. Is that? Exactly. <laughs> yep. I mean, in the U.S., it's a little slower. They're still in the way. Yeah. But we've seen this before. The mainframe, the mini computer businesses. Um, how, what do we got to do to get this going faster? So I, I think I, I, I think the contrary. This year, I felt like talking to so many customers, the enthusiasm for moving to the cloud is a lot more. I think. Uh, the, the various industries are disrupting at a rapid pace. Uh, I think cloud gives them a viable option to drive new application innovation a lot faster. Yes, it's challenging. Migration is, is, is a challenging process, but now they have the tools in place. Uh, partners like Best Pay and CA working together to help uh, customers migrate to the cloud better as well. Uh, cloud players like Amazon are innovating at a rapid pace. I think the enthusiasm of enterprise is a lot more nowadays than it was a couple of years ago to even migrate the traditional stuff to the cloud. All right, so here's a, here's a question for both of you guys. Agile operations is all about building apps that get scaled up, having the infrastructure available. So what's the coolest thing that you've seen out there, or the coolest thing that you've done or seen involving being agile, being you know, operationally scaling up? What are some of the cool things you've done or seen? So I think it's, it's, I've seen a lot of customers, especially one of the customers talk about delivering agile operations, but at the same time, tracking customer experience as well. So one of our customers says, uh, they don't measure availability or performance in a high DevOps environment. They, they, they measured failed customer interactions, right? So be it infrastructure, be it applications, but they track through our solution set that how many failed customer interaction they are. So as they're developing these new services, the new applications, they are, they, I really like the focus they have within the IT group and the development group that they measure their success of a new application on the failed interactions of a certain application, be, a, be it an e-commerce app, be it a, a gift card transaction processing app. So I think that mindset from a certain customer using our tool set about failed customer interaction was really phenomenal, especially in agile ops when you have really high-paced DevOps environments. Brad, what's the coolest thing that you've done or seen? Uh, I think I think like uh, the coolest things we're doing these days. Uh, I mean, we are the main service partner for the, all the enterprises like in uh, Asia, like, like 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 big big names like you know if you can name like from Korea or the our customers. And uh, recently we did a very interesting project from, from Korea to China. Uh, it's uh, one of the uh, leading cosmetic brands uh, in Korea and uh, they want to migrate entire workloads on sitting on the legacy infrastructure back to the cloud. So front ends running on the uh, uh, public cloud services and then the back ends running on the private cloud. So we were helping them to achieve the uh, first time they're actually doing that, and then we're helping them achieve that goal. That's hybrid cloud. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, right. but as, as, as uh, Andy Zassi today, uh, Kinos, he mentioned about, uh, it's, uh, they, I mean, Amazon is moving to the hybrid as well. I mean, they, they're providing the v uh, VMS solutions on top of the uh, AWS. Yeah. So I, I don't think like uh, uh, enterprise customers, they will put the 100% workloads all based on the public yeah. cloud services because there are a lot of compliance driven issues as well. Yeah. Last two minutes we have, I want to talk about making IT fun again, you know? <laughs> because like IT, we're seeing guys get really energized, like, yeah. like to your point, get out of the old way, the old guard, whether it's suppliers or techniques that have been bottlenecks or a lot of brute force labor, manual work, mundane, uh. now automated away. We talked about in our last segment about management, mm -hmm. moving from plumbing to machinists. Yeah. Now you have things like Alexa here on the table, 
that's a cool feature that makes IT you know, more cooler. Yeah, and absolutely. some of the machine learning stuff that AMD talked about today, that Dr. Matt Wood came out and talked about, you know, you're going to see specific cool AI stuff coming down. Absolutely. This is an opportunity for IT. What are your thoughts on some of the things that could be possible with some of the good software coming in the cloud? No, no, absolutely. I think going in the cloud as well, it's all about the solution set that you're using as well. The architecture is so open, like our CS Unified Infrastructure Management product. Uh, our, actually, our own GIS team saw this a need, and they actually developed uh, using our open APIs and architecture, integrated with Alexa. The code would be available for free on our marketplace soon as well. So basically, imagine it's a simple use case. They use it for a lot more use cases, but imagine you're a CIO or an executive making your coffee in the morning. Instead of going into your software, logging in, you can say, hey Alexa, how many critical alarms do I have? How many applications will be heard? Can you send me an email? And on his way to work, he can just go through that email. So interacting with Alexa, making it more productive. I know it sounds a bit, uh, like, why, why would I use Alexa? But imagine there are a lot of use cases that you can use. You're in a meeting room with five IT ops guys. I mean, everything that's happened on Star Trek is now coming to Star Wars and Star Trek is going to happen in IT. Yeah, absolutely. Great dashboards, a little bit of visualization. Absolutely. Voice activated agents and bots, chat bots. Absolutely. They're all happening. I can envision clearly that some cool things will be automated way to make, make life easier. No, absolutely. You know, how are the server status? <laughs> Employees could have biometrics, so when they go into the office, based on your stress level, shift responsibilities to the other guy, <laughs> the younger guys. <laughs> but I mean, all, in all seriousness, this is a kind of a cloud mindset. Yep. Do you guys see any timeline where we're going to start seeing some AI in IT? I, I think, I think even, even as a cloud MSP, we are seeing the trend that the, uh, like the players in this uh, segment try to be more analytical, more data driven, and a lot of the uh, machine learning, the, uh, the, uh, the elements will be embedded into the managed services elements. And we are doing that as well. So in our roadmap, we'll be adding a lot of the analytical uh, components to our platform as well. So give the customers like uh, automated you know, way of the, uh, uh, preventing uh, certain things like happening in the, in the IT infrastructure. Yeah. Thoughts on timeline and when you see AI being I, th I think it's, it's quite a while. You said it was here in our last <laughs> segment. So I think it's, it's everyone aware of it, so, uh, but there are a lot of things like cloud migration, adopting the newer uh, delivery models, newer modern infrastructure stacks. They have to adopt those and then AI comes in the picture. But definitely it's on the timeline. People don't think about AI as something that might be possible. Everyone knows it's possible. I th but I think it's, it will be a year or two because it's before it starts going mainstream. So question for you um, on the cloud wars. Stu and I were opening up uh, last night talking about in our opening editorial segment about how the cloud wars have been won. We now have five people, like cars in a race, clustered together, at AWS, IBM, Oracle, um, Google, the rest, right? So you got those guys, the main, and Microsoft, right? Yeah. So, multi-cloud world? Are we in a multi-cloud world, or will you see some specialism among cloud players? Certainly Google has great technology, no Salesforce. Amazon's got great technology, no Salesforce. Mm -hmm. Microsoft has okay technology. Some of you say that's a stretch, but they have a huge Salesforce. Oracle is Oracle. <laughs> IBM is IBM. I mean, yep. that's a pretty big competitive strategy lineup there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your thoughts on this whole multi-cloud, how do customers navigate that? I, I think it's a definite uh, uh, way of the, uh, like, to be a multi-cloud uh, world. Because uh, we are in China and Korea, and uh, if you talk about China, there are a lot of the, uh, the policies and government regulations um, you know, constrain um, you know, like, uh, a lot of global brands to play as they play in a, in a global uh, market. So as you, as you know, like, Ali Yuin is very, very strong in China. So customers will choose a cloud based on their workload types and a lot of the business drives. So it has to be a multi cloud. Yeah, and there's a huge audience over there too for this, yep. this, uh, this kind of demand given the entrepreneurial action, both inside and Absolutely. outside companies. Guys, well thanks so much for coming on and sharing the, the, the Alexa story there, but also more importantly, congratulations on the relationship. You guys got a good customer here, and maybe someday we'll get the Cube to Korea for a... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it would go over very well. <laughs> we need some local talent there, but only kidding. Thanks for coming on, I appreciate Thank it. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, okay, This sir. is the Cube, CA Technologies, and their customer here on the Cube. More live coverage after this short break. <laughs>